most embarrassing situation you ever been. This one has haunted me for years. It was the first week of 10th grade, and I was new at my high school. My other new kid friends and I sat down at a table in the cafeteria, and another new girl sat down with us. She was in a wheelchair. So I expected her to be really timid and introverted, but she was actually sarcastic and funny, introducing herself and making jokes about being in a wheelchair. Example, her, I'm trying out for field hockey. Me, wait, really? Her, haha no you idiot, I'm in a wheelchair. Eventually, one of my friends boldly asks her about how she ended up in a wheelchair. She says it was cancer. My friend asks which kind. She responds, leukemia, have you heard of it? Now, bear in mind, she was funny. She really was. And come on, who hasn't heard of leukemia? So my gut reaction to her response was that it must be a joke. I mean, everyone's heard of leukemia. It was too late. I burst out laughing. I immediately realized what had happened and tried to cover it up by gasping. It only made it worse. Everyone at the table glared at me. I spent the rest of lunch in absolute silence, and I never spoke to her again. TLDR, don't laugh at leukemia. Ever. Okay, I've already posted this story somewhere else, but I think it will fit in nicely here. I'd never masturbated in my life before this point. I was 18, and really didn't know what to expect. It was at a friend's 18th, so we were all getting pretty drunk and by some miracle of the divines, I was chatting up a chick way out of my league, and convinced her to go into another room with me. The lights were off when we went in, and we didn't care about doing it in the dark so we just shut the door and headed in the general direction of the bed. We could just see the bed from the light when we opened the door, being my first time, I didn't last very long, couldn't have been more than a minute tops. My D started to hurt so I pulled out and started to jizz over the bed, but having no idea what was going on and not being able to see, led me to believe that I'd broken my penis and was shooting blood everywhere, and I started crying. Then we hear this coughing from the bed, and OF. Though I didn't realize this for another minute or so, it turns out we had walked into my friend's parents' room. They had earmuffs on to sleep through the party, so they didn't hear us come in and slept through our first minute of sex. But I had managed to jizz all over the dad's face. And he woke up, switched on a bedside lamp, to stare dumbly at two half-naked teenagers standing beside the bed, frozen in fear, and opened his mouth to speak before realizing it was covered in semen. He shouted at us and kicked us out of the house, and my friend got a ton of S from them too. We're still mates, and his mom thinks it's a hilarious story, but his dad still hates me. TLDR thought I'd broken my pee, jizzed in friend's dad's face while he was sleeping. I was the assistant senior patrol leader at a boy scout camp, which basically means I was second in command, if you don't count the adults, who were intentionally hands off at this camp. When a scout screwed something up, I was the one they sent in to set them straight. I was walking back from setting some little less straight, and I realized that diarrhea was approaching. I walked past an outhouse, but that S was gross and I had a flushing toilet like half a mile away. So I powered through. About halfway there, I realized it was a mistake. So I waddled there as fast as I could. I got to the toilet, leaned over to put the seat down. Boom goes the dynamite. I took off the underwear and scrubbed down the shorts with toilet paper. Put the underwear in the pocket of the shorts, and I casually walked back to my tent. So here's the conundrum, there was no way for me to dispose of this mess without letting my secret out. The trash bags around camp were all transparent, and the dumpster was like 3 to 4 miles away. I couldn't just take off for an hour and not draw questions. So I just put the S-filled boxers and shorts in a zip lock bag, and I waited. I just kept it in my tent for the next 8 days. 8 days later, when the camp was over, my parents came to pick me up. I got home and sneaked out to the trash can in the garage to dispose of the evidence. It's done. I got away with it. Everything went better than expected. The next day my mom comes into the basement and says, Burning rubber, I just found your shorts in the trash can and they were full of poop. Did you poop your pants? So I conceded. But here's the thing. Why did she need to tell me that? So she found a bag of S that also had shorts in it. Shen to tell me that? So she found a bag of shit that also had shorts in it. She knows what happened. I know what happened. Let's just leave it at that. Why does she need to call me on it? I have two, both similar. I have been caught masturbating by my mother twice. Both times catastrophically embarrassing for me. The first time was nothing unusual. In my bedroom, she knocked and then walked in not a second after, what the hell's the point of knocking? I was naked but was able to cover up quickly, but she still knew and walked out. I was 17 and I had older cousins, so she asked my aunt about what to do. She explained what she did with her two older boys when she caught them. 
This was of course my more gossipy aunt, and proceeded to converse with her other sisters and brothers that my mother had come to her with this advice. Fast forward a couple of weeks to a family birthday party. I feel everyone's eyes staring at me, their glares penetrating my skin. My older cousin Allison comes up to me and strikes conversation. Eventually asks me, so how did she catch you? I said, um, excuse me? She replied, your mom caught you masturbating, didn't she? I suddenly was so overcome with embarrassment that I began to sweat profusely and vomit. Vomit lots, and lots. Like I said unfortunately there were two times. The second time was a little worse. Our computer is in the living room. I was too poor for a laptop, so I was sitting in the spinny computer chair naked, clothes not even in the room with me. I had gotten home from class a little early and figured I had a few hours before my mom came home from work. I was horribly mistaken. Unfortunately she had been sick and decided to leave early. I heard keys on the other side of the front door, and I panicked. So I turned the speakers and the monitor off as fast as I could, but stayed seated. When she entered, she saw her son sitting quietly at a blank computer screen, but as naked with an erection. Luckily, I don't believe she saw that part of me seeing as I stayed facing the opposite direction of her, but still terrifyingly awkward. We have waited speaking and I contact for about two weeks. TLDR mom caught me masturbating, told my family about it, made me puke. Second time I was naked in the dark, sitting in front of a dark monitor, frozen like a statue as she just walked past. I'm a big guy, but my fiancé's female Australian shepherd always acted dominant around me and tried to hunt my leg on several occasions. So one day on the back deck, it tried to hunt me again. So I decided to show her who's boss. I grabbed her from behind and started humping her. I did this for, I don't know, 10 seconds. When I looked up, the new neighbors who just bought the house next door were all standing in the yard holding their cardboard boxes, just watching me. At the moment, I thought it will seem odd if I stop humping now. So I kept humping and just waved to them casually. They didn't say a word and the next week put the house back up for sale. The first time I met my ex-girlfriend's parents and family, it was Thanksgiving and PS2 had just came out. I went over we were having dinner and her whole family was there celebrating. Her dad and I start talking, he says he is a big gamer and would love to try it, so I go and get it from my house. I just lived a few miles down the road, along with my VCR because their TV was old and it was the only way the PS2 would work. So he starts playing M2K or some S. Then about an hour into the session, my ex's little sister sitting next to the VCR I brought accidentally hits play with her foot. This causes the VCR to play a tape which happens to be a hardcore porn I left in. Up pops a Latino chip getting DP'd on screen in front of her grandmother, little children of the family, mom, everyone. Her dad just says goddamn satellite and tries turning it off with the remote. I wait a second, probably a little too long, I could not move from shock, and shamefully get up and walk over to the VCR to turn it off. Her dad says wait was that yours? Embarrassed as hell I say yep, everyone laughed and she was so pissed, but I ended up being with her for 3 years so it must have not bothered him too bad. Also our family other than her parents were evangelicals they judged me from that point on, and I cannot blame them lol. TLDR first time I met ex's family, brought PS2 and VCR to hook it up, old TV, on Thanksgiving. Play gets hit on VCR accidentally, DP porno pops on in front of whole family and grandma. Alright this isn't my story, but belongs to a friend of mine. My buddy met a really nice girl at the bar. They hit if off hugely, had a ton in common etc, so he got her number. Took her out a few times, and after the third date, they went back to her apartment. They had amazing sex, apparently, and passed out. In the morning, the girl has to leave for work, and tells my buddy that he can sleep in, and to just lock the door behind himself as he leaves. Dude sleeps until about noon, and, taking advantage of the apartment's amenities, takes a satisfying dump. But, to his dismay, the toilet won't flush. With no plunger in sight, he heads to the kitchen and grabs a Ziploc freezer bag. He turns the bag inside out, removes his deposit, and zips the bag up. Feeling assured that he was in the clear, he collects his belongs and starts to head for the door. As he passes through the kitchen, he sees his lady has left him a note blah blah blah, had a really good time, can't wait to see you again, blah blah blah. He's stoked, so puts his items down on the counter, flips the paper over, and responds with a lovely note himself. He finishes writing, and heads for the door. As he locks and shuts the door behind him, he realizes that he had left, in clear view on our kitchen counter, right beside his love note, his bad turd. And he never heard from her again. 7th grade, right before school let out for the summer. Out of class early, decided to go get some freezies. Came back with a box of the damn things, couldn't eat them all. Between three of my like-minded and equally bored friends, we decided to start bribing people to entertain us for freezies. Curiosity ensued. 
Hey, we'll give you a freezy if you show us your D. It was going along pretty well. Then this one guy refused, but countered with I'll show you mine if you show me yours then. No way. The going rate is 1D per freezy. And there's three of us here. So you better have 3D under your pants. Then he tried arguing like, 1D slash freezy is equatable to one set of boobs slash freezy, which was just plain poor logic, because we had the box of freezies and he didn't. Supply and demand 101. Anyway, uh, we settled on some exchange of tits versus D, and he delivered first. And just as I was lifting up my shirt, my godfather, English teacher, middle school headmaster, rounded the corner into the common lounge where we were, and commented, ah, summer esprit. The birds, the bees, my goddaughter's naked titties. A little flat, but you've some time ahead of you yet. Please give my regards to your father. Ick, there was just something about that delivery. So deliberate, but aloof. Also, that burning shame, crying face. I don't get embarrassed easily, although I've had my share of embarrassing stories. One time I had parked my car on the street and was running into a theater to drop off a job application. The parking was a small thing in the back near the dumpster and there was a small alleyway to the theater that I was running through, the floor had some well slicks on it. So my dad was in the car yelling at me to hurry so I run down the small alley. I didn't know about the small wheel slicks and I was sprinting when all of a sudden, slip, I caught myself and everything but then I hear the loudest laughs from behind me. A car was passing by down the street with a group of women and they stopped, saw me fall and burst out laughing in the loudest manner possible. I got up smiled and ran in and dropped my app off, my butt and pride were hurt but I managed a charismatic smile. I'm walking back through the alley and who do I see but the group of women in the car walking up to me, they tried to stifle their laugh but no. They burst out again and I just smiled. One goes, I'm so sorry you fell, but that was the funniest thing ever, are you okay? You were so graceful with your fall, it was like a ballerina, you fell and it looked like you didn't even touch the ground. I'm late for the party, but this is my time to shine. This little event took place about a year ago, and it is by far the most embarrassing moment of my life. This is my ultimate Larry David moment. Anyway, I was at uni during lunch hours, and I suddenly felt an urge to release the chocolate hostages. This is actually a rare event, as I'm not really comfortable pooping in public, but as uni was almost empty, I figured the situation was at least as good as it could be. In my search for the most abandoned bathroom on campus, I eventually found the perfect spot. It was perfect, it was clean and it was big, it even had some fancy armrests on each side. I sat down and enjoyed one of my best poops ever, it was huge, it was liquid and it smelled fantastic, from my POV. I sat there pondering, and started reading the newspaper. After about 20 to 25 minutes, I had to get ready for a lecture and started finishing. The lecture room was nearby so I wasn't really in a hurry though. I folded the newspaper neatly and put in my bag, washed my hands and opened the door. You probably guessed it, but no, not only one person was waiting, two people were waiting, I in their wheelchair, each of them with their personal handicap assistant, this is normal in Norway. In a moment of shock and embarrassment I realized I had chosen the only handicap wheelchair accessible bathroom on the entire campus. The floor was swallowing me. It felt like a blackout. I was traveling through distant galaxies, and then I just froze. I stood still like a model posing for a painter. It was the longest seconds of my life. Well, this is where it gets uber awkward. Some part of me thought, hey, we got this bro, relax, and then I decided to walk with a limp, without saying a thing. The worst part was that when I first started dragging my right foot in the most over-exaggerated manner you can imagine, I knew it was too late to stop. I had to finish my act. I have never been so embarrassed. When I was about 12, I was on a family vacation in Cape Cod. The year before that summer, I got into a bike accident that scarred me for life, literally and figuratively. My competitive mother was racing me and basically knocked me over to win the race. So, I had not been on a bike in about a year and didn't really want to be on one. Yet that was the one year that my dad decided it would be a good idea to go bike riding on vacation. So we started out on this bike path that would lead to the beach where we would spend the day and have lunch. I expected a nice trail that had been paved going through a scenic park or something, but no, it's a trail that goes on the side of a very busy road, where millions of families are all racing each other to the beach. Needless to say, I was terrified and going about 3 miles per hour. After about a mile and a half of this, my family decided to just turn around instead of waiting to see if I could have a full-blown anxiety attack. So we're on our way back and there's an old man walking on the path that I can't get around. I yell out a friendly to your right, expecting to pass by his right side as he moves safely to the left. Did that happen? Of course not. Instead, he interpreted that as a move to your right instead of a watch out, there's a bike on your right, and so I slam right into him. I don't fall off my bike, but there goes this 80 year old man right into the road. Thankfully, there weren't any cars around, 
but I just looked down to see the man rocking on his back like a turtle on a shell. I helped him up while I was bawling my eyes out, then quickly walked my bike away to meet up with my dad and sister, who had already gone ahead. As soon as we see them waiting for us at the parking lot, my mom retells the story, and they laugh their asses off. Then, right as we were about to go on, the old man comes walking down the street and sees us. Then he comes over to my mom and says, I just want to thank you for making sure your daughter wears a helmet. I used to be an avid biker until I got into an accident. I wasn't wearing my helmet and I now have brain damage, so I'm glad you keep your daughter safe. So basically, I hit a frail, elderly, brain-damaged man into the road where he could have been hit by a car. We then saw him randomly throughout the entire week, sending me back into tears. I have never ridden a bike since. When I was 16, my mates and I were playing cricket in the nets, fenced off pitches for training. I was standing at the top of the run-up, waiting for my turn to bowl. My mate who was batting hit a ball so hard it would have gone for six, over the fence, without going higher than about a meter off the ground. The hard cricket ball was heading for me at an incredible speed, and all I could think of to evade the ball was to do a weird kind of star jump. Unfortunately, this technique failed dismally, and instead of missing the ball, I had perfectly positioned my genitals directly in front of the ball's trajectory. The ball canonied into my love spuds at an incredible rate. The first sensation was an intense stinging feeling, like a hornet had stung my knob. This quickly gave way to the most intense nausea I have ever experienced. I projectile vomited everywhere, all the while screaming. While this was going on, I remember my friend saying in a panicked voice what have I done, he's never going to be able to have kids. At some point one of my mates called an ambulance and it arrived fairly soon after. To add to an already fairly humiliating situation, there was a very pretty 18 year old girl who was riding around with the ambulance for work experience. I have a clear memory of her shriveling up her face as the EMT examined my swollen member. I was taken to hospital and the humiliation continued as a female doctor poked and prodded me to try to get some idea of the damage. She eventually concluded that everything was where it should be but fired one parting shot to further compound my embarrassment. In earshot of my parents, she instructed me to masturbate as soon as possible and to inform my parents if there were any difficulties or unusual discharge. I completed this task the following night and fortunately, it was all okay, aside from the fact that it simultaneously hurt like hell and felt great. Not a fun experience at all. Now I'm a pretty scrawny kid, 16 years old. White people may say I'm nerdy cause I wear glasses and am really into Vikings and middle age stuff. So one day I'm just minding my own, playing Vikings in my room, I'm about to put on my Viking costume, I had my furry horn hat on already, but I didn't even get to finish cause my brother bursts in the door. He starts hitting me and pushing me around. He goes H-E-Y-U-F dork you wanna make some money? Now at this point Skyrim had just come out, naturally being the middle ages buff that I'm I wanted it more than anything. I didn't feel like waiting for Christmas and I didn't have a job so I said yeah sure what, I said. Mom says the toilets won't flush down so she told me to go in the basement and shake the shit pipes. I don't want to do it so we'll pay you to do it for me but only if you do it fast. Couple things you should know, 1. My dad is a plumber and owns his own business and he considers my brother and I his apprentices so we know a thing or two about plumbing. 2. Our house uses a septic system and the pipes run through the basement out to the tank which is underground in our front yard. Sometimes the pipes get clogged because they're pretty old and usually shaking them a little bit helps loosen it up. I know ironic because my father is a plumber. So back to the story. So I immediately agreed to do it, dropped everything I was doing and bolted downstairs. Now the pipes run perpendicular to the floor so they stand vertically. I grabbed a nearby broom and started pushing at the pipe moving it back and forth rapidly to try to get the blockage to loosen up. All of a sudden, the bottom of the pipe closest to the floor burst and the piss marinade desk started to fill the basement. It started to fill really fast, I mean like defying the laws of physics fast. Now that I think of it, it was probably because the pressure built up and all of the gravity created a vacuum that sucked more of it out of the actual tank. So immediately, I start getting scared because I'm thinking I'm going to drown in the S piss or pissy S. Soon after it leveled out to about thy height. I grabbed a nearby hamper and the displacement of the water and the air bubble underneath the hamper created a flotation device upon which I kneeled and basically rode myself towards the stairs. I remember just getting pissed off and thinking to myself, God damn it, fix the shit pikes he said, he'll pay you money he said in a sore of mocking tone. By this point my mom and brother had heard my screams and came bolting down the stairs. My mom is screaming at the top of her lungs and dry heaving at the smell, I'm too pissed off to notice the smell. My brother is laughing his ass off watching me basically row myself to the stairs and he decides to take a fucking picture with his phone. The house smelled for fucking weeks and thankfully my brother did pay me and I got Skyrim. So now you're probably asking yourself what was so embarrassing if only your family knew about it. Well my brother is also a Redditor and he decided to post the picture all over the internet, straight face, fuck my life. 
TL, DR brother was going to pay me to fix the plumbing in our house. Pipes broke and filled the basement. Brother took a picture and posted it all over the internet. Back in high school, a doctor thought I might have testicular cancer, so he wanted me to get an ultrasound on my nuts. I go to a specialized place and go into the room, and the one thing I'm thinking to myself is, please do not let the person who rubs the one gel on my nuts and then massages it with her tool be a good-looking woman. And of course, in walks a quite attractive young doctor. She hands me two towels, which I was to use to cover certain areas, and tells me how she wants me to position myself, laying face down, on the table while she leaves the room to give me some privacy. As she is leaving the room, I'm thinking to myself, how am I supposed to do this, giving her access to my junk, while laying face down? So I do the best I can, but make it from the midsection down, I lay on my chest and try to pull my nut sack, from behind, up through my legs and basically lay them on my butt, which is a pretty difficult thing to do, so I take one of the towels, and roll it up, and put it below my junk to keep my balls propped up between my legs, then put the other towel on my butt checks. The doctor walks in, takes one, strange look at me, and says, you're supposed to be laying on your back. Now, that makes a lot more sense. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe the channel for more exciting stories. You have to get out of the matrix, so watch our other videos right now. Stop chilling on your couch just like that. Get on with it.